button? I don't even know. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, we're back. Uh, episode 43? I was, I was going to ask right before you said we're <laughs> no, going to start like, this. I was like, and damn I was it, like, I didn't look. You know I didn't I check. I'm, Hold on. I'm I, pretty sure it's 43. I can, I can figure it out. It's been a day. It's, we were just saying it's been a week, you guys. It's been a week. Yeah, no, hold on. No, 42. We're on 42. Because, yeah, 41 was, was in person. So, you know, we're on 42. We were wrong. Or I was 42. Wrong. <laughs> I was wrong. No, yeah. I, I agreed with you. So. <laughs> I was like, hold on. Wait, one second. Um, that's, yeah, that's the hardest 42. part of the week is remembering what episode <laughs> Which that episode we're that we're on. Yes. Uh, if that's our hardest part of the week, I think we're doing okay. I think we're doing okay. So, I wish you guys could see this setup right now. I have three cups of coffee because we're usually on here for an hour. And as soon as we get off this podcast, I have to run to errands. Okay, perfect. Water, like, no wonder why I have to pee so much during our episodes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what is up with us? <laughs> All the liquids. I don't know. It's prep life, man. It's prep life. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Hit the buttons wherever they are. There we got it. We got it. We good. <laughs> yeah. Gotta have some no, shoulder just... pain this morning. Ow. That hurt. Okay. Oh, <laughs> you know. I'm in there's... battle right now. I know. <laughs> Thursday's some of my check-in days. So this morning, you know, I propose as soon as I get up. So this morning, as soon as I finished, I was going to make coffee. And I'm like, oh, my God, my body is so sore. I was like, what the hell? Me oh. too. Me too. It's like, Lord. it's as soon as your body feels better, you're right back into making it yeah. sore again. <laughs> well, I, you know, I went and I did, I trained three days, three days in a row this week because I didn't train for at DC, you know what I mean, at the, at the show. So I was like, I had to double up. I was like, oh, I can do this because, like, my yesterday was my upper body metabolic day, which is the, the faster pace, lower weight, and all that kind of stuff. But you forget, like, I'm doing like battle ropes and stuff like that, so you forget like how taxing that can be. So this morning, I was like, damn, what did I do? I was like, oh, that's what I did. See, you were and... you were doing the live commentary, so you didn't have any time. But I love the setup in DC because I the know. guys went on in the morning, and then my girls didn't start till three, so I was able to get them all checked in. I did cardio. I got a good shoulder lift in, and that stupid hotel gym but it was something yeah so i felt like it was like you know normal it was kind yeah. of awesome so i didn't skip a beat this past weekend no i do love like i was saying I, I love the setup that we have for the shows here just because of that like usually on a typical show and i'm not doing commentary same thing i can sleep till i normally sleep i can get up and eat how i normally eat you know yeah. i have the rush in the morning i can go get my cardio whatever i can do cardio or lifting or whatever in the morning so it is it's a it's a really good setup i like the i like the setup so yeah it was good and the stage is beautiful like our yeah. stage photos are so nice yeah. yeah 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 i just had that conversation actually with one of my girls because she was like um so she bought two suits right and she we were gonna do one red and one purple after we did the red one she was like i just want both red so we're doing we're doing another red but we're changing up the cut a little bit i was like okay cool no problem so then I get a, a message from her yesterday and her second suit's already in production right now. So um, she's like, can we go brighter red? I was like, you, I was like, you do realize, I was like, that this picture that you sent me is muted at the, the colors. I corrected the colors on the, on the, on the stage photo. And I was like, this is what it really looks like. <laughs> I was like, it's actually very bright red. It's about as bright as you can possibly get. She's like, okay. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but stage photos make such a huge difference. I mean, you see it when I, when I'm trying to like critique the shows and stuff, it's so hard sometimes if the lighting is off, like you can't see anything. Like I can't yep. tell what they look like in person. Yeah. And I'm still like getting used to like when you're checking a girl in the room and you're filming them, right? So you have mm -hmm. the, the the video in front of you, but mm -hmm. you're looking at them. They look completely different in the phone than they do. Mm -hmm. in front of you. And it's such a mind fuck as a coach because that's where you like, you know, when the girls come see you in person, that's why Drew and I are very hands on because sometimes people are checking in online and then they come see you in person and you're like, you don't look like this. <laughs> you're fucked yeah. Well, you know? even like, that's even why, like, I know I check with you guys, I check with Jamie and that's why I like doing that in person because I have a, a, like a running log of what I look like when I record myself and what I look like when I'm in front of you guys and record myself. And like, at least I can see the different changes and stuff because it's different. It's just, you don't, you don't look the same. Sometimes I see videos when I'm, when I check in with you guys in person and stuff, and I'm like, I didn't know I had that much size on me. You know what I mean? Like, I don't look like that in my photos and videos at home. I look thin in my photos and videos at home. And I'm like, I don't look like that. Like, it's weird. It's just a completely different look. It's so Probably strange. though too, like in the morning when you do, when we do our, our <coughs> check-in, I love my first look in the morning. I love a fasted look. Yeah. But for fasted versus full, you know? And yes. I've Absolutely. been checking in with Jamie in person once a week when we're home and I hate seeing her because it's like 2.30 in the afternoon. I'm already two meals in, a gallon yeah. of water. Yeah. But she's like, you look so 
so much better than your phone because she's actually able to see the muscle. And fill like, it oh, out. Yes. <laughs> no, it is. And I, I feel the same way. I like the way I look when I'm fuller. I don't, I don't particularly like the way I look when I wake up because my glutes are flat and all that kind of stuff. Like I just had this conversation with one of my clients yesterday because she's been posed. She's been a posing client forever and she's been posing like half-assed, you know? So she's like, putting in bad habits basically. So I was like, you know, you got to find a, a time. She's, she's been posing like in between sets of the gym. I was like, I don't want you doing that. You're not in heels. You know, you're on your flat feet and all that kind of stuff. And it's not helping you. It's actually hurting you and creating bad habits. I was like, I, I want you to find a time where you can really give it your all when you're posing, you know, like for me, what I do on my Sundays, always on Sundays, sometimes during the week, if I can, depending on time, I go and I train at the shop and I do my, my glute workout and then I go pose and then I do my cardio. I do my posing in between. And I do that on purpose because I know I still have energy after I've just lifted and I know that my glutes are pumped from the, from the workout. And I was like, I want to see what I look like in that lighting and everything at that time. And I know that that's going to be like my best posing of the week right there. And I just know it's going to be because of how I set it up. So I was like, you need to find those, those times and places. Where, and again, I, I compare that each week. So I compare what I look like last Sunday, this Sunday, next Sunday, so on and so forth. So I have different reference points because just like you said the athletes look so different when you're in person you look different no matter where you are under what lighting all that kind of stuff like consistency in your lighting and your photos and all that is so important when you're checking in because you can't see changes otherwise you just can't you just can't see the changes yeah. so i mean you just got to find those the, again I, I and i have picked different stuff i personally see so this was the other thing too do you like ring lights or do you like natural light better when it comes to your clients checking in for you depends it really depends yeah. like because honestly Sean like when I'm starting out with someone some of the times it takes us two weeks for the client to figure out the lighting in their house and what looks good and like I am that coach that will make them move around in their house so some people I have them outside in natural lighting some people are standing in front of a window some people have to have all the lights off in their room and just a ring light like it's yeah. I don't know it just depends on their environment in their home yeah, for me, it's hard because like, I actually like natural lighting better, but it's so inconsistent. Right. It's so inconsistent. You can't control the sun. You know, if right. it's raining, it's raining. A lot of people raining. don't wake up at the same time. No. I'm noticing. So they're like, well, some days I wake up at six and then other days I'm up at 10. And I'm like, yeah. No. Or even as, even as the, as the time, the time changes through the, through the, the year, the sun, like when it raises, rises and sets, you're going to have different amounts of light. It's true. You know, if it's raining that day or, you know, whatever, like you, you're going to have different lighting and you're going to look different, you know? Yeah. So, so that's why for me, I like all lights off and just my light. Same. My, yeah. Yeah. I do. I do the ring light all the time. I don't like the ring lights. I think it blurs you out. I think it actually makes you look softer. I think it makes you look prettier. You know what I mean? I like natural light because it shows all the flaws. Yeah. But it's just so inconsistent. It's hard to do. In our move. in our house now, I mean, you guys see, we have window, we have these windows everywhere. So like, I put, I've positioned my backdrop like in a uh, closet. Yeah. So it's like, really dark, but then I have the light, and then I have the windows that are kind of like ten foot feet away. So it's kind of mm -hmm. a blend right now. And I finally yeah. figured out like this is it. This is the perfect setup. This is it. I'm keeping <laughs> this one. <laughs> well, that's, I, you know, that's why I do the in my studio. And I have blackout curtains, and I make sure that it's completely dark, and it's just my ring light, and that's it. Because that's the only way I can control it. It's the only way, only way. And like even on even with that, there's variances in the light every yeah. week. Every, yeah. Just you, if you step a little bit closer to the light, or a little bit further away, or you just hit your angle a little differently, or whatever, it's gonna look different. So it's really and it drives hard. me nuts on my photos because I'm like, I want it. I'm very particular. I want it to look the same, and me that's too. why I like to crazy with some athletes, and they just take it. They don't even look at the photos. So they just send it. I'm like, did you even look at this photo? Because you're not even sitting <laughs> in the pose yet. You're like, not even. You're not even in the center of the camera. Yes, hundred percent. Me crazy. Yes. <laughs> but that's also the coaching mentality too, because it's like, we look at photos, like we look at ourselves the same way. Like I pick apart my photos worse than I do any of my, of my clients, oh way my worse than I do Me any too. of my clients. Me too. And I'm picking apart the wrong things sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Uh, that's why you need coaches, need coaches, right? <laughs> that's why. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's why I came in and checked in with you and Drew. Because, you know, obviously going into D.C., like, um, you know, Jamie was super slammed. So typically I go and pose for her as soon as I see her in person at a show or whatever. And she's like, I just, I, she's like, I got 14 she 15, from yeah. Yeah, she's like, I don't, she's like, I, just don't. I was like, I was like, you know what? I said, Drew's at this show. I said, why don't I just go check in with them? I was like, <laughs> I was like, he does my training anyway. So I might as well do that. And then, and then if there's any tweaks, I'm sure he can relay it to you, you know? 
and it worked no, out. No, that was really cool. Close. Yeah, it was fun. I enjoyed that. That was fun. You know? Yeah. Um, and you look better in person than your uh, photo and videos. I look so much more muscular. It's just fucking crazy. Like, yeah, again, going back to, I mean, even just, just watching the videos back then, it's on my phone. It's not like it's a different, like, no. it's not different. It's my phone, but I look bigger and more muscular every time when I check in with you guys than I do at home. Like, what the yeah. hell? It's like, it's like you guys bring the ana anabolic light with you or something. Right. <laughs> Drew's was talking to an athlete on the phone a few minutes ago, and they're like, "We want, we want those lights that are always in your guys' room. We always look so good on it. How much?" I know. We're like, they're expensive. Yeah. They're ex I hate when people message me and they're like, "How much are? Or can you send me the link to the light?" And I'm like, "I'll send you the link to the light, but don't judge. Like, the lighting's expensive. It like, is. good lighting's expensive. Yeah. Like, oh, I know. My my ring light is like three hundred dollars. Just the ring light. I do. Yeah, I have the yeah. Glamcore, the one that the mm -hmm. um like makeup artists use. So it's not yeah. the ring light. It's like the one that kind of like okay. stretches out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And it's just like this beautiful, like I call it like a crystal white light, and it yeah. has like it's just this beautiful light. I don't know, but lighting makes a difference. That was sure a tangent, is. but <laughs> yeah. But hey, I think it's worth it. I know I get this question all the time. Me too. And you know, I, whenever I onboard clients, you're right. It's like the pictures that come back. I'm like, I can't work with this. I'm like, yeah. I can't. Where it's like, oh yeah. So you just, you just want me to evaluate right here? Yeah. <laughs> like just. No, just, just there. Your All of you, your feet, everything, and it's yes. like, and I get it. Sometimes it doesn't, you know, it doesn't compute right away. Most, I, I will be honest, because when I send that first message, I'm like, I show them pictures, I send them videos, I, I tell them exactly how to set their camera up, all that kind of stuff. So usually, the first check-in photos aren't terrible, but <laughs> we always have to fix something. Always, you know, yep. there's always something we have to change. So you know, I had a girl that just started yesterday, sent her photos, and she had probably her husband or something take them for her. So the picture's like up here. I was like, no, I, I'm like, I can't, I, I'm like, I can't see you. You need to be down, <laughs> down here, underneath, not above. <laughs> Those are my like, favorite too. The ones that are like, are, was the person on a stair, a stair? Yeah, when they were yeah, there, yeah. Or, or like so low and like going. Yeah. Up. Uh, and I have one client again, posing client. She always puts her phone on the floor and goes up and gets so low. I was like, I can't see anything. I, all, like, you see, all you see is ceiling. That's right. Or like I'm seeing up your suit, not your nose. at your suit. <laughs> I'm like, this is I'm seeing things I don't need to see. Like only exactly. your doctor needs to see this. I don't need to see this. <laughs> only your doctor. <laughs> Just like we were talking about when you wear the, the suit bottoms backwards. I don't need to see all that. No. <laughs> Just not quite right. <laughs> no, not, not really. No. No, no. no. So um, so other than that, so how's your prep going this week? Good. Uh, really good. We're down a little bit more wheat, which was shocking with um, being out of town all weekend and how busy we were and on yeah. our feet. So uh, yeah, we down, we, uh, I checked in on Tuesday. We dropped food a little bit, nothing crazy. And then I did my in-person with Jamie and Drew on Tuesday too and uh, built the routine. So now we have my full routine done. So now I just need to practice. Okay. Um, and I, I need to be better at practicing. I haven't been practicing at all. So coming to you guys and you guys can keep me accountable. So there you go. Uh, yep. We built, we built the routine. So that's super exciting. And anytime I get a compliment from Drew is a great day for me. I've been getting lots of compliments this week that good. I'm, I'm farther along than he thought, than he thought I was and things like that. So, so far so good. And literally, truly, I, I made a post about this last night. Like this is the first prep I've I am really just embracing the suck and I'm grateful for it. Like when, when something is hard or I'm on that second, you know, cardio bout or whatever, I'm like, this is so cool. Like I get to do this. Like yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful, you know, for, I, I always just go back to like, you know, the people that aren't even in competing are always looking at the, the people that are competing and want to be in their spot. And then the people that are competing that want to be pros, like, you know, they, they want to be in that spot. And then the, the pros, they want to be Olympian. It's like, I'm so grateful for the journey and where I'm at and, um, I don't know. It's just completely different mindset this year. And the mindset is everything and mine is in a yeah, really, really absolutely. good spot. So I'm, good. I'm grateful. Awesome. How about you? Yeah. I mean, the, it's so weird because I'm slowly starting to drop now as far as weight is concerned, but I see the changes all the time. I just checked in this morning and I'm like, I, I swear to God, every time I check in, I'm like, I look more muscular every time. I'm like, am I just like, I'm supposed to be dropping fat. I'm not supposed to be gaining muscle right now, but I think I'm doing both. So I'm like, I, you know, again, I saw my, my, my video actually this morning. I was like, damn, I look like thicker, like in a good way. Like I look thicker, denser and everything like that this week. And I did last week. I know some of that's because I'm dropping body fat and you just see the muscle better at that point. You know what I mean? So, um, no, this week was really good. Like in the gym, I have like when I'm actually training, I have vascularity everywhere. 
like fucking everywhere. So like, I know, I know I'm getting leaner, you know what I mean? And I can see it and all of that. So, you know, the, the, when I look at the scale too, I'm like, you know, actually technically I'm like 13 weeks out and I'm 11 pounds up from what I was last year. So I'm right in the right zone as far as my, as far as my weight's concerned. I think I'm going to be heavier this year than last year. I'm hoping I'm going to be heavier this year than last year. So and even Jamie said that when we checked in there, she's like, you know, she's like, I know the weight's not moving. She's like, but you needed size and it's, it's there. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I'm like, I, I really think, uh, you know, I was 139 in Japan. That's what I was that morning when I woke up for a show day. So I'm hoping maybe I'm going to be over 140 this year. That's what I'm hoping. Maybe like 141. 140. Yeah. Like 141, a couple of pounds. <laughs> yep. You know, that would be, I think that would be really ideal. And really when you look back at it, like some of my best looks like when, were when I first turned pro and I was 138 pounds the day that I woke up and I won my pro card. So really, you know, and that was 11 years ago, you guys. So when we're talking about size and adding size and stuff like that, like you're not adding pounds and pounds and pounds and pounds every year. Like I was 138 pounds when I won my pro card. I was 139 last year. You know what I mean? It's not a lot. It's just that. No, that I density. tell people all the time, like Hunter Labrada. <laughs> yeah. A guy, right. So lot, eating lots of protein and hands yeah. and things like that. Maybe gains maybe five pounds of muscle yeah. in a year. Maybe. Yeah. It's hard hard to gain it muscle because women 100%. like we're lucky if we get one pound in our off season yeah. or two pounds you know yep and you're like and that's you know you look at these bigger guys you're talking about hunter and all that stuff so look at these guys that are over six foot tall like they're talking about how they got to get up to you know 320 pounds in the off season and stuff like that in order to be able to be competitive when they get on stage and be like 275 when they actually get on stage you know what i mean like and the guys that are half their half their height are going on stage at 250 you know so it's it's even at that expansive of a physique, they're not, it's not that, it's not that much. It's really right. not that much. Like at the end of the day, and we're, we're, we're like a third of the size of them at the most. Well, that's, <laughs> you know why, I mean? that's why it's always <laughs> such a tough conversation for the women that are still in that old mindset of like, well, if I look at a weight, I'm going to look like a man. And it's like, we don't look like this on accident. Like it takes super hard work. And I'm sorry, like mm -hmm. for the women that do, you know, they're a little bit more, I don't know, just have a lot of muscle, you know, the, yeah. the open women bodybuilding, like they're, th th that is a purposeful approach. Like they just, just wake up one day and look like that from training, you know? Nope. So it, it, it's a lot of hard work and it's diligence and it's consistency. And then it's, it's so funny. So they say the thing about, you know, well, I don't want to pick up a weight and look like a man, but then, you know, they do dieting for two weeks and expect to have muscle and then they yeah. quit when they don't. So it's like, yeah. Which thought process is right or wrong? You know, they can't both be the same. Yep. Um, yep. No, I just saw this thread on Reddit like yesterday or whatever. One, uh, somebody was asking about, you know, uh, natural bodybuilding. Like my coach is telling me if I want to do this naturally, I got to be in it for the long game. I was like, you do realize that even if you're not natural, you have to be in this for the long game too, right? Like my, my favorite. Do not supplement no. good dieting or drinking. No. I'm like, my, my favorite thing to say to people like that is like, is like, natural bodybuilders natural shitty bodybuilders are the same as enhanced shitty bodybuilders they're just bigger so like there's no easy button it's like if you're a shitty bodybuilder you're going to be a shitty bodybuilder there's no way around that whether you're natural or you're not period like it's just if you're a good bodybuilder you're going to be good if you're natural you're going to be good if you're not yeah but it's even more frustrating like you saying it like that like if you're a shitty bodybuilder or a good bodybuilder you still have control over that you can yeah. still great bodybuilder you just yeah. gotta change your approach <laughs> yeah absolutely anybody but, could be a great bodybuilder just do you do you a good plan <laughs> but so many people think like you were just saying like you do it for two weeks you're gonna put on muscle you take this magic drug and you're gonna put on muscle it doesn't work if you're not training right if you're not eating right if you're not sleeping right if you're not drinking water that they're not it's not it's not gonna work no it's not gonna work <laughs> so especially sleeping especially yeah. sleeping like, <coughs> everybody's like i'm training hard you know i'm working all these hours i'm doing all these things and i'm barely sleeping why am i yeah. not I don't, because you're not sleeping you're not sleeping you have to rest yep. your body has to rest in order to go oh well like i just feel like you know push 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 more is better more Absolutely. is not always better mm -mm. more is not always better <laughs> i literally just checked in a new client this morning with that conversation because she's come from an athletic background she's got a, she's got a really good amount of muscle and all this stuff you know, but and I told her, I said, listen, this is gonna be fun because all we gotta do is reshape you. You know, we really yeah. just gotta reshape the muscle. You've got you've got the size. We just gotta make it look more aesthetic. I was like, so she checked in for the first time this morning after I sent her programming all stuff that last week. She's like, 
so is this all I'm supposed to be doing in the gym? I'm like, yes. <laughs> I'm like, this is it. I was like, more is not more. I was like, it's just, you know, rest is where you're going to change. Recovery is where you're going to change. We don't want to rip you apart like day to day out. She's so used to, you know, she soccer, played soccer. You know, she's an athlete where they were doing two days and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, that's not how this works. Well, and that's the interesting part, right? I guess it's very person dependent. She's already coming to you with a bunch yeah. of density, you know, yeah. so she's not done her time. Now right. it's just about small shaping mm -hmm. where you get someone else who's brand new to the sport. They're brand new to, to training and bodybuilding. You could push them a lot more and they're going to have yeah. a different kind of first time season. But yep. it's that, that is the fun part, especially the shaping because it's like, yeah. they already have the people. So it's like, that's the fun part for us. Cause it's like, okay, you need a little bit more here. It's like, there's a little science experiment. Yeah. You know? It was but exciting it was when like I got her first for pictures. Them. Yeah. I was like, I, I, was, I was cool. So like, oh, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> but you're right for her. She's like, is it, this is it. This is right. what I'm supposed to do. It's completely different. <laughs> I'm like, yep, this is which it. Kind of, which is kind of cool too, though. But yeah. I get it too. As like a first time athlete, you're like, wait, I'm signing up for this really intense sport. And it's almost like, I feel like I'm pulling back, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's yeah, true. Because a lot of, a lot of athletes, especially collegiate athletes, when they're done, what are they going to do? Right. So a lot of them go into bodybuilding or powerlifting. A lot of yep. them come from powerlifting and then yes. eventually they get older and their joints aren't taking it anymore, but they still love the gym and the competition side of it. So what's the next best thing? Bodybuilding, but it That's takes right. away that, again, that impact on the joints. So it's easier. It's yep. easier to bodybuild. It feels better for them, yep. but it also is going to feel like a lot less. Yep. I mean, I had to go through the same thing too. When, when, you know, Drew went through my training and took away two of my days of training. I was going to say that. <laughs> I was like, I, I had to go through the going, same thing. Wait, I have three rest days. What am I going to yeah. do with myself? Well, I'm like, to work? Do. I don't know. <laughs> I know, right? I was like, this is weird. I don't like it. I don't like you, it at all. You have two, two rest days now, and I only have one. I want to go back to my two rest days. I know. Well, technically, I mean, because I'm still doing cardio, so I only have one full rest day. Oh, I never have, like, a full rest. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Never a full rest day. Yeah. But. Well, it's still, it's still the cardio, and that's the part that I hate. I hate the cardio, so I'm like, oh. That's the part that I hate. Uh, I, I would lift all day long. Even that, like I said, the metabolic circuit that I'm doing now, I will do that all day long because I'm like moving weights and stuff like that. I'm, I'm not just on a treadmill. It's so for that for more cardio. I know. I know. Well, one thing that we have been doing, because again, if I'm home, my, I'm pretty sedentary. Like I'm at the de my desk all the time. The only time that I get up from the, my desk is to go, you know, to go to the gym. <laughs> so it's yeah. like, I'm not, I don't get a lot of steps in really. So um, at night, you know, Dan goes to the office when he comes home. He's like, ready for our walk? So we go on a walk around the around our neighborhood. If we go on a full loop around a neighborhood, it takes us, depending on our pace, it takes us anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. So it's perfect. I get the, I get all my steps in doing that. So that's been actually really nice. We do it, we do it after dark because it's not super hot out or anything yeah. like that. Really. So that's, that's been nice. I've been walking the roof and it's super hot here. So I've been going yeah. at like 4 o'clock, which is like, it's brutal, but what I do is I'll turn on the sauna and then I'll go walk 12 laps. And then by the time I am done walking, I just go right into the sauna yeah. and I'm just pouring sweat yeah. and my heart rate's going up. And I'm like, my, my fat is crying right now. I feel like my metabolism is roaring. <laughs> it's it's the, the fat leaving your body. It's not sweat, it's fat. I'm just sitting in there and I'm drenched, like a little drenched rat. And I'm just like, my, my fat is crying right now. Take That's it. so Take funny. It. <laughs> uh, I have the hardest time with sweating. I don't sweat very much. So, oh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a full blown sweater. Yeah. I yeah. think about sweating and I sweat. <laughs> <laughs> now probably, if, you know, and, and again, our, our climate here is not super hot either. It's like, it's everything in Virginia is like moderate everything. So yeah. there, we don't get really bad summers. We don't get really bad winters. We, we're just, we're just right here all the way across. Actually, so. when I left Sunday morning, it was beautiful. It was like a yeah. little cool. I was like, oh, this yeah, nice. the weather right now is gorgeous. Like, like yeah. we absolutely love sitting out on our back deck. We talked about this. We love sitting out on our back deck, you know, during the day even, because we've got enough shade back there with the trees that we can sit back there and, and all so that beautiful. stuff too. So, which we, so I, we were talking about this from last year. We were getting grass down on our front front yard. This year, we're getting grass down on our backyard. So, oh, cool. We, yeah, we cleared out a bunch of trees, and the grass is actually growing. So I'm like, oh, like this, like we have we have actual grass in our backyard. I'm like, oh my god, you know, awesome. So, who knew? They kept telling us we couldn't grow grass on our on our yard because of the slope, because it's such a such a slope. Oh, this was the other thing too. This made me laugh. So I think it was Monday. We were sitting on the back deck, and, and Dan was like. Why didn't you invite Jamie and Drew and Jordan and all them all, all over to the house? I was like, because it's an hour away. <laughs> I was like, I was honestly, like, I was wondering that too. Like, I was like, why didn't I just go to Bonds after we landed? But I know, but it's an hour. It's an yeah, hour. Yeah. I get it. But I, I was would, like, I'm the to you. 
There you go. I was like, I was like, I don't think they went. I was like, they don't leave the hotel. I was like, you saw them. I was like, they ordered food in. They didn't even go out to dinner. <laughs> Girl, which you barely did, wanted to go out after that. You know, which, you by the way, oh. it was. Which, by the way, I forgot about this place. So there's this place called Clyde's, and they're open until like two in the morning or something like that. And it's walking distance. We walked there from the hotel. Oh. Yeah. What kind of food is it? Um, like burgers, normal stuff like that, but seafood Perfect. and stuff too. Perfect. So like we got like, Oh oysters. yeah. Because I saw that you yeah. got like the oysters. Cause yeah. I was wondering it would, cause you, yeah. you're on prep too. I was like, what yeah. are you going to get tonight? Perfect. Oysters and shrimp. And I, I had oyster shrimp and salmon salad and it was really good. I, for, I completely forgot about that place. We went there a couple of years ago and they had the Ben Leader there and it's, it's literally, it's a 15 minute walk down the street. So Perfect. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Take notes um, for next year. I know, right? No, it was it was it was perfect. And like I, I again, because we went downstairs and the um the bar was closed at that point. She's like, "Oh, Clyde's is open." And I was like, "Oh, okay." And I plugged it in. And she's like, "Yeah, you can walk there." I was like, "Cool." Oh, the yeah. lady at the hotel told you that. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. yeah, yeah. Cool. We and again, we went there again. This was like two years ago for the Ben Leader because it's the same location, the same venue. So we went there after the show. I completely forgot about it. I forgot about yeah because show. it was like ten there. o'clock when you and yeah. me left. Yeah, yeah, we got over there at like ten thirty or so. Something yeah, like that. yeah, it was, it was late. late. So I was, I was impressed that we were able to get like actual real good food at that time of night. Like I was yeah. like, oh yeah. When we walked up to it, I was like, oh yeah, I remember this place. I forgot about it. I forgot it even existed. <laughs> cool. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, it was. It was very fresh. Because again, we're, you know, when we're talking DC, Virginia, Maryland, we're right on the on the ocean. So right. you know, you can't get you can't go wrong with getting seafood around here, like oysters and shrimp and all that kind of stuff. It's all it's all fresh. It's all fresh yeah. right here. So. I really do like that hotel too. I mean, if it's not ten o'clock at night, they have like the sushi bar downstairs, yeah. cafe, and then the gym's not. It's not terrible. Terrible. It's, yeah. yeah. But. The only thing that's bad about the hotel is the elevators are slow as hell. Oh my gosh! I could I could do a full check in by the time the doors open. Oh my god! And then you're waiting. Like, yes, I waited probably one day. It had to be at least ten minutes. Yeah. If I if I was on the twentieth floor, I would have just gone up and down. I would just oh, walked. For sure. I would just walked. But I was like, sure. man, oh my God. It's like that every year. Yeah, it's like yeah. that every year. It's just like, it's, I don't know what it is, but those elevators are slow as molasses. Slow well, as they molasses. Should, they should really do something about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, we never even talked about what we were going to actually talk about as our topic today. <laughs> no, we didn't. <laughs> we just, we just, just throw that in. Yeah. We'll just throw so, it in. Uh, we're going to talk about um, mental. Uh, I guess do's and don'ts, things to um, not get stressed out about, things not to do going into a show in prep uh, or just in general and how to manage the stress and how, you know, things not to do as far as when you are stressed out and things to do when you are stressed out. Um, this is coming from, you know, athletes that we have to work with going into a show, coming out of a show, all that kind of fun stuff. So um, why don't you kind of start with the story that, 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 you know, you brought the topic up with for me. Oh, of course she's going to call me out. Okay. Of course. <laughs> um, yeah. So basically Sean and I were, were talking that it's been a rough couple of weeks as a, for me as a coach. Um, there was a few instances with athletes where they will send me a, a direct message and they're in the moment having a very emotional response to prep. Mm -hmm. They're extreme their anxiety is extremely high uh they're not feeling ready um whatever we all have have experiences that have been in this sport there are days that are better than others and it's very hard as a coach when you read that message because you're trying to go back and forth with the athlete on coming up with a solution and then by the time the conversation is over the athlete ends up saying i'm sorry i shouldn't have even sent that message i was just having a moment yeah Two things in my brain uh, uh, cross my mind when this happens. Number one, can I then trust the athlete to actually come to me when something is actually wrong, right? right? Like mm -hmm. how if they do that every single time, I don't then know when to take them seriously or not, if something right. is wrong. The right? boy who cried wolf. Yeah, like here I am, like I spent 10 to 15 minutes with both of these athletes, like trying to figure things out. Like we came up with a solution and then only to cut, to get a message then an hour later, like Jordan, scratch all of that. I'm sorry, I'm feeling better. I just had an, an emotional response. Yeah. And then second to that is like, I just then took another 30 minutes of my time, which is fine if there's a true problem to problem right. solve with you that for then just to say, sorry, never mind. Yes. I can think back to two instances in a prep 
where I was truly suffering, like suffering. And, and I was trying to think of like how I responded. And the first one I've talked about here before, which was with my coach. And I just, for whatever reason that day was crying because I wanted one Oreo cookie. Mm -hmm. Like I was suffering and that was just my obsession in that moment. And I did not call my coach. My husband yeah. called my coach and said, she's losing her shit. What do we do here? Mm -hmm. And the, the, the guy ended up saying, give her an Oreo cookie. But I didn't want to call him because I didn't know what was happening. Like I didn't yeah. want him to think that something was wrong and then do something with my prep or screw it up, right? So I was just like, I'm just gonna sit here and suffer in silence. And the second time was actually last year at North, I was at North Americans. I wasn't competing, obviously. I was there as a coach and I was just pushing, pushing hard for conditioning. We were supposed to be a few weeks out from a show. And I was just sitting in my hotel room crying because I was so hungry. And uh -huh. Drew was like, you need to call Jamie. And I was not going to call Jamie, but I did. And I ended up getting a refeed and I felt much better. But if I would have just called Jamie on emotional response and be like, I'm hungry. I don't want to do this. I'm going to pull out. Like that's not to me professional or a solution. Right. So I think that we have to be better at realizing that every day in prep, when you wake up, you're going to feel differently. Mm -hmm. Some days you're going to feel great. Some days you're going to feel down. Some days you're going to feel like you have no energy. Every day is going to be different, right. but it's normal. And you yep. have to, re you have to realize that you're going to have to ride the wave and prep is not comfortable yeah. in any means. That's why only 10% of the population does this. And so how do we accept the suck? Yeah how do we get there mentally? And I think that it comes with reps and time. And some of these athletes that I'm referring to, these are not first time athletes. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just takes reps. So, yep. you know, I don't know, Sean, I, I think this is, a, I don't think there's a one size fits all answer here, but I think that sometimes it's just about taking a deep breath and truly understanding what is going on internally and what do I need right now? Right. Do I just need to call my coach and have her listen and vent? Do I need a change? Do mm -hmm. I need, Thing, or do I just need to be heard? Because I think right. those two things are different. Yeah. Well, I think I'm like you. Um, I don't put my problems on other people because, I, you know, I'm that person that everybody puts their problems on me. And you're like that too, as being a coach, things like that. So I know what it feels like, you know, and I'm very much an empath. So if somebody lays something on me, I probably feel it even harder than they do, to be honest. Um, I obsess about things in my head and making sure that it's going to be right for them. You know, like I really do. Like if somebody brings me a problem, it sits in my head until we find a solution. Uh, it just, it just does. So I know that about myself. So I don't want to put that onto somebody else. Right. Yeah. I don't want to do that. So that's a great way to put it. Yeah. It's just, I just know, I know how I feel with that. So now not saying that everybody is going to feel the same way I do. Some people just brush it off and they're fine. But I, I also I also think of worst, worst case scenario and all possible scenarios. And that's how I feel. So I feel like that might be how they feel. <clears throat> so one thing that I always do that's a solution for me is my notes app on my phone. Mm -hmm. I sit down and I write and type out everything that I'm thinking. And I read it through. And then I type more. And then I read it through. And then I type more. And I always end up deleting it. But it's just a way for me to get it out of my head and onto, onto paper or my phone, whatever. Brain just, dumping. Yes. Just so I can get it out, you know, because I know, and I do this even with like friendships and relationships. So like if I'm having a hard time with my husband or something like that, I sit there and I do that first before I go and like unload on him because it's not fair to him either. Like if I'm having a moment, you know what I mean? So I do that with everything. I type it out and then, I, and then I'm able to go back and again, I go back and I read it and I'm like, yeah, you're being crazy. You know, or I look at it and I say, no, this is actually something that I need to address. This is actually something that I need to bring to their attention. Let me figure out how to bring it to their attention. You know, um, <clears throat> most things when I'm going through stuff, I don't talk about it until I've figured out a solution. You know, when you're talking about the, the whole um, ER situation, like when I went to the ER and I was having all those problems, the first thing I didn't do was, was reach out to Jamie and be like, help. No, I reached out to her after it was over and I was like, just so you know, this is what happened, <laughs> you know, like just to get, let her know that this is where, this is why my numbers are a little off, all this kind of stuff, whatever it might be. But I, I there's nothing she can do at that point. There's nothing she can do when I'm in the, in the ER and figuring Except out for worry. My body. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So there's yeah. what, why am I going to bother her with that? You know, there's no point to that. Like, and that's actually something that's, that's become a thing because of my husband too, because my husband's way worse at this. The shooting the look. I love it. <laughs> Drew, you're being loud. <laughs> my my husband's 
wasn't just the worst, that's the way worse, like to the extreme of way worse, like you need to communicate kind of thing. He doesn't tell me things that I can't do anything about. Meaning good example is he like, at one point he went to the hospital and he never told me. And I didn't find out until I found the bill in the mail. <laughs> and I was like, what is this? I was like, were you ever going to tell me that she went to the emergency room? He just didn't even tell me. Like I was out of town or something like that on a trip or whatever. And he just didn't even tell me. I was like, I would never have known if I didn't open up the mail that day, you know? Right. So that's the extreme of the other end. <laughs> like yeah. you, you need to communicate those things. You know what I mean? But you know, there's, there's ways to do it where you're communicating it versus being a fire drill. Like we have to an emotional it. outburst. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Because I don't want this to come across <laughs> as like, I don't want people to reach out to me because I want communication. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I want a healthy line mm -hmm. of communication. Correct. You know, like, hey, Jay, this is how I'm feeling. I don't know what the solution is, I'm, but I'm coming to ask you, like, is there right. anything you think that we need to change? That's because right. other than that, it's more of just, and, and which is fine, they want to be heard. They want right. to be heard that they're in a mo and they're, they're hard, they're pushing hard, they don't feel good. And I get that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes there's nothing I can do. If right. we got to be stage lean, this is where we're at right now. Right. I need you to put your head down and keep focusing, you right. know? And it's one of these conversations turned and then we had to get on a call because, you know, then it was like, well, you know, if we're pushing so hard right now, then I'm not going to see a treadmill for a week after the show. I said, so what you're telling me is you're not going to be following your reverse diet. Right. right. And then when we got on the call later, the person said, I apologize. Like, I didn't mean that. And that's okay. That, okay. That's okay. Like no problem. But like, Again, then that makes me fear the reverse diet, right? right? Like you just told me in your emotional brain that you're not going to be following your plan after the show. So like now mm -hmm. I'm going to have to really keep an eye on you. So yes. I just feel like there's just healthy lines of communication. I love the notes tab. I love yes. that notes tab idea. That is something that Drew does. And my mm -hmm. husband is a very anxious person. He has anxiety disorder. He's very open about that. And he does that when he mm -hmm. feels that that initial burst of emotions with me, if he feels upset with me or he writes it down and he reads it back to himself and he's asking himself, is this real? Right. Like, is this a real feeling or is this my response to something that's happening and I need to change my response? And yeah. sometimes he finds both. Sometimes he pushes through and brings it up to me because it's true to him. And sometimes he reads it back and goes, this is my response to her right now. And she's valid in the way she feels. So I just need to change my approach. It's not worth bringing it up. Yep. And that has really helped our marriage. And I think yeah. a lot, of, you, you could, you could apply that to marriage. You could apply that to prep. You could apply it to really any relationship that you have. Absolutely. Um, but I think it's just understanding that there are going to be days that you don't feel good. And I guess you could blame that on the coach, I guess that you're suffering, but my job is to get us to our goals. That's right. And I'm, I'm going to promise you, if you are on my roster, there is going to be a point in your prep where you feel like you are suffering because yeah. I am not bringing you to a stage out of shape. That's not yeah. my style. So yeah. we got to buckle down. This is what we got to do. And most of the girls take it with stride, but some mm -hmm. have those emotional responses. And that's where I'm, I, I'm, I'm being vulnerable because I'm having a hard time as a coach on how to deal with that. You know, yeah. I do the best I can. I get on a call with them. We talk it through. Um, and most times it's, it's, it's reconcilable, but Sometimes like I, I, I feel bad because I'm a people pleaser. I don't want them to be upset with me, mm -hmm. but I also know that I'm the one that's increasing cardio and decreasing food. So I understand that there's some sort of resistance to that. Yeah. You know, and, and that's, and that's where you have to step back and say, you know, I chose this, like, this is, this is something I chose to do. So it's not going to be easy. It's not all glam and everything that you see on Instagram. It's just not, you know, in order to get into that kind of shape, you have to suffer as women. That's not something that we're built to look like. It's just not. It, it takes time. It takes effort. It takes suffering. And even though we do it to the safest and healthiest way that we can, like we really do practice a really good, like sometimes I'll be honest, sometimes I have to step back and be like, you guys don't realize how good you have it. You really don't realize how good you have it because I've gone through the, I've gone through the shit. Like I, I have some girls that complain they're still on 150 grams of carbs. I'm like, I've been on zero carb before. Yes. Zero protein only. Like, my first coach had me on 800 calories a day. I'm five foot nine. I was on 800 calories a day. Okay. okay. So, so hush. Like my husband really thought I was going to die. We were dating at the time. He's like, are you, are you okay? Cause literally I would get up, I would eat, I would go to the gym and I'd go to bed. That's all I did. Like I've had a I was like exhausted. Yep. 
Yep. I was exhausted. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, that I didn't look good either, but whatever. <laughs> that, was, that was really bad. Approach. Why would you? <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's a really great point of what you said about like Dan, like Dan being cancer, yeah. right? Because I think yeah, a lot yeah. of times too, I just had another message with a client this morning, which is normal. We've talked about this, the family commentary, right? So you're pushing so hard, you're suffering, you're questioning everything. You're very mm-hmm. sensitive. And mm-hmm. then the people that love you the most make a comment. Yeah. Right. Oh, you look too lean, which by the way, when you're 10 pounds over stage weight, still to an average common person, you're going to look too lean, but you're not yeah. even under stage. Right? right. So then you're thinking in the back of your mind, oh my God, I'm too lean. Well, yeah. my coach said that I need to, you know, drop 10 more. And then you're in this like kerfuffle with yourself. Right. Mm-hmm. So the commentary actually, I think hurts clients more, especially Absolutely. from the people they love the most, their husbands, their wives, you know, and their parents. Um, oh, you look too lean. Like, are you sure? And then they start getting in their own head and then mm-hmm. they're going back to the coach. Like, well, my husband said I'm too lean. I'm like, yes, this is the leanest they have ever seen you, right. but this is not bodybuilding show. That's right. You yep. know? So then they get even more stressed now because their spouse thinks they're too lean. They know they have to get leaner. Now they're stressing if their spouse is going to be okay with this. And it's just this whole thing. And I get it. I don't have a solution for it mm-hmm. other than you have to be upfront with the people around you at the process of what this is going to look like. Yep. You're not going to be able to go out to eat. You are going to look freaky and lean. People yep. are going to be looking at you out in public because you look like a circus freak. Yep. That's part of the sport. There's right. only, there is a reason why only a little bit of people can do this. Yep. Yep. Most people can't even stick to a diet for a week. Mm-hmm. And I will say that I'm kind of lucky in that regard because you are too, because you have a partner who understands the sport. And my husband was a wrestler and he did bodybuilding shows a couple of times when he was younger or something like that too. But so he understands the extreme of sports and how far you have to push yourself in order to be good. So, you know, we kind of have an advantage where they understand what we're going through. Most people don't have that kind of support system. Most people, most people don't have people that have done this before, you know? No. So it, 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 I get it. It's hard when those, when those comments sit in the back of your head and you're like, am I doing the right thing? You know? Mm-hmm. And that's when you really have to trust your coach at that point too, to know that you're going in the right direction. And that's hard to do because we're here. We check, you check in with us once, twice a week, maybe. And you're around your family 24 seven. You know, like that, that's a hard thing to manage sometimes. So you do have to have a good support system. I know I've got um, a client now that she just did a show with me and now her husband is also prepping with Fit body too. And so they're, they're kind of doing it together where they can kind of lean on each other. You know what I mean? Which is awesome. You know, cause then when one of them has an issue, the other one can be like, no, but you got to do this, you know, listen to your coach or whatever it might be. They can support each other through that. So I think, I think that's also um, something to know when you're not in an emotional space, know who you can go to and who you can't in your life. Absolutely. You know, there's, there's always going to be those people that are going to be there to support you. And then there's going to be those people that are going to be there to neg you Negative. out. Negative. Yeah. And there's also this, this rule of if you feel like you have to tell more than three people about your problem, you're not looking for a solution. You're looking for attention. So if you're just going around telling people all of the issues that you have, you're not actually looking for an answer. You're just looking for people to listen to you. That's all you're Mm -hmm. looking for. So if you feel like you just need to go tell somebody, that's a good trigger in your brain to be like, I just need somebody to listen to me. I don't need a solution. I just need somebody to listen. If you're saying, no, I want advice from this person, this person, and this person, then that might be something you need to actually bring to your coach. And actually talk to them about because you're looking for an actual solution to the problem versus just somebody to listen. Yeah, that's a that's a really great way to think about that. So, you know, that's a good way to do it. I do my best to be very upfront in the beginning of what a prep takes, obviously, especially Mm -hmm. for first time competitors, but also for people that have never prepped with me before. If they're coming from a different coach, right? Because Mm -hmm. we all prep so differently and what that process looks like. And that can also be intimidating to some people if they've been with a coach and then I'm doing things completely differently. They're going to be like, well, my old coach did this. I know, but I don't do things that way. So I do the best I can, but unfortunately, like sometimes you don't know until you're there. And then that's when it's scary. And then that's also when you're emotionally compromised because you're deep in prep, food is low, cardio is high, you're exhausted, everything is compromised. So this is where Drew and I always refer to healthy brain chatter and then like compromise brain chatter, right? So when you're starting prep, you still have a healthy mentality. That's the time to write down in that notes tab Mm -hmm. what your why is, 
what your goal is, maybe a comment to yourself on the days that you know it's going to get hard mm -hmm. and what you're going to read back on those days, because there are going to be days where you feel like you can't do it anymore and things like that, but you have to push one more day. You have to find that next gear and you can do it. You yep. can. And Absolutely. it's okay to have emotional outbursts. I, I'm not sitting here saying I have never had an emotional outburst on prep. I just usually don't call Jamie first. Right. Just know when and where. Right. No, when, I'll, call, where? I'll call Drew. Honestly, I never call Drew because he's the same. He'd be like, suck it up. I'll call suck it up. Friend. I'll let it out. Yeah. And I move, I try to move on, you know? No, that's where having a good community of, of, of girls like that do this yes. is, is good. Like that's, you know, we started the backstage pass and all that stuff. That's why we have cuties carp in the stage. These girls, you can reach out to those people and that's where you can do this. Yeah. You know, you have those little group texts and you can go off about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, that's where you do this kind of stuff. You know what yeah. I mean? And yeah, sometimes okay. I call my dad and I'll just be like, I just need you to shut up and listen. I don't I don't want you to say anything when I'm done. I just need to set, say it. And he'll mm -hmm. be like, okay. And then I'll be done. He'll be like, okay, are you done now? Okay, cool. So, so how's the weather? Yeah. <laughs> and and that's sometimes just all I need. I just need someone yeah. to listen to me bitch for a second. And that's then right. I'll be, yeah. And that's totally fine. <laughs> and again, knowing when and where to do that. You know, knowing yeah. when and where not to do that too. You know, we can go into that for a minute too. Like people that, that do those, out, those outbursts on social media, right? That is the worst place to do this, you guys. Yes, I don't care. Show. Yes, I don't care if you delete your 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 post. Screenshots live forever. Yep. Sorry, if you do something like that, somebody has a screenshot. They do. It's, and it's send out it there. right to a judge or the to the promoter. It takes yeah. one point two five seconds. Listen, we saw this happen a couple of weeks ago. Again, one of my girls was in a show. She's the one that sent it to me. Somebody that was in her class bitching about the fact that she didn't win the overall she won her class but didn't win the overall judges saw it the judges at the show saw it and she was bitching about her physique being better than what it should than, than the local level show so she was bitching about the competitors and she was bitching about the judging all in the same post and the judges saw it the judges saw it judges are on social media you guys that is not a good look not a good look and she and like I saw like her responses. Her responses. She felt like she didn't do anything wrong. She didn't think she did anything wrong. I'm like, you do realize that you just nagged out the girl that just won the overall at this show. You nagged out all of the judging panel that was there that said they didn't know what they were looking at. I said, do, do you have any clue that that I'm mean, like they see this? Like you posted out that you put it in your story highlights. And, and then eventually only, it got <laughs> taken down, right? It did. She took it down. Yeah, she took it down. And I'm and guessing her coach one, probably told her to do that, but I don't know. Well. Then you have the, the other side of this, good point, and you mm -hmm. you commented on this one on Reddit, was a coach yeah. posting their athlete, and the feedback was that she was too muscular. Yes. And he was like, I don't care what the judging panel, and he was literally calling out, the, I don't care what the judging panel says, I'm taking this girl to nationals, and she has a pro-level physique. Yeah. You commented on it, and Becky Clausen commented on it. And she was like, I agree with the judging panel. She yep. is too muscular. She's you too need muscular. to, you, you know exactly who I'm talking about. Yep. You need to, mm -hmm. you need to bring the arms down, blah, blah, That's blah. Right. Absolutely. And he was commenting on everybody else's feedback. Didn't comment on Becky's. Of course. Cause she's the head judge. You know, and it's like, where, do, yeah. I just don't understand, like, where do you think that's going to take you? Nobody likes to be attacked online. It's judges certainly don't want to be pressed and mm -hmm. they will remember that. They're yes. going to remember that. Like, yep. they're going, like, listen, they're, they're going to still award her if she's the best one that day. They're not going right. to take it away from her, but it's, it's not a good taste in the mouth for the coach. And there's still that human bias. And even if it doesn't hurt you on stage, it hurts you off stage. Of course. It hurts you off stage. Yeah. Like it just, it just does. It shows your character. It shows your character mm -hmm. real quick. Um, you know, being able, and it, again, going back to, if you have an emotional response, we get that that happens, you know, it's happened to the best of us. It's how you respond to that emotional response <laughs> that makes a difference. You know, if you come out and just say, yeah, listen, I should have had a burger. I'm sorry. You're wrong. Like or I was wrong. You know, I should, I shouldn't have done that. Whatever. I think most people will understand that. I think most yeah. people We'll, we'll be like, okay, you know, we get it. We've been there. We've done that. You know, just come back and, and, and just, you know, go have your burger and come back, whatever. But when you double down on it and you're like, no, I'm right. You're wrong. It's like, no, yeah. actually yeah. you're not right. <laughs> I think the biggest superpower you can have in this sport is the ability to accept uh, feedback and 100%. critique. 
because it is a yeah. constant game of feedback. It's 100%. each week in your check-ins. It's every time that you step on stage. I just did an in-person check-in with a client that wasn't on stage this week and she just came to see me in person. And she, you know, checked in this week and she's like, I'm feeling a little bit discouraged after I saw you because you just hammered me on all the things we have to improve on to be competitive. And I was like, listen, even Jen Dory, when she walks off the stage at the Olympia, right. gets feedback. Everybody has feedback in this sport. Right. You could be Absolutely. the winner and still have something to work on. Like, so I have been very honest with you guys. Like before the sport, I was sensitive. Like mm -hmm. my dad growing up always, you said, you need tougher skin. You need tougher skin. Yes. This sport taught me tough skin because mm -hmm. each week James telling me, you need to be better at this. I have my husband telling me you need to be better at this. And some days it's a lot and, it's, and it yeah. is overwhelming. And I feel like, oh my God, you guys just keep telling me I have to do <coughs> that nothing's enough. Yeah. Um, but then I get a week like this week where everything's great. You look great. Everything's moving yes. in the right direction. So it takes those moments of the nitpicking to push mm -hmm. you and to change right. you so that you can get less feedback to work on. Absolutely. But I think that's the biggest superpower in this sport, because if you could keep that healthy brain of every comment and every piece of advice can make you better and you just right. accept it with grace, you will be better. Absolutely. You know, tear you perfect down. example of what you just said. So I did my wrap up with the DC Pro-Am and there was a comment on my, uh, my um, YouTube about that and how I was saying that Tara may have looked better for, um, if her tan was darker. Right. So, cause her tan was really light and everything. Yeah. And the comment was like, you're like the way that you're talking, it's like, she didn't win the show. I was like, she, of course she won the show. Clearly she won the show, but she could still be better. You know, she didn't run away with it. And by the way, this is, this is something that's a little bit of a pet peeve of mine is when people say that they won with a perfect score because we don't actually know that <laughs> because high scores and low scores get dropped. So even if it, if, even if it evens out that it looks like you got a perfect score, there's still at least two judges on that panel where their scores were dropped. So they may not have gotten a perfect score. We actually don't know that there could have been judges on that panel that did not have that person in first place. And regardless of if that person was in first place or if they were in second, it doesn't matter. Everybody has things to work on everybody. And what I said about this comment too, was listen, they didn't rejudge at finals at DC. Okay. But Tara came back with a darker tan. She came back with a darker tan at finals. So that tells you that even she knew that her tan was too light at prejudging. Even and it was. she knew that. And it was. Yeah. It was too light. It was, it was too light. You know, so even she knew that she had to improve on that. So, you know, me saying And if here, that's your only feedback, right, that's great like, feedback. That's, that's totally fixable. <laughs> like, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> no, I'm just like... Yeah. Everybody know, like, and that's the thing is like this show, you were there in person, nobody ran away with it. Nobody. No. no. Not one person ran away with that show. No. And even and at the Olympia, not one person runs away with that Olympia title. Every single person is fighting for that win. Yeah. So that I could have made an argument for any of the top four that day. hundred percent. Yeah. And that means that there are things they can do better. Yep. That means there are things they can do better. And at the end of the day, that's what makes the sport interesting. Feedback. Yeah. If everybody came up there looking perfect, yeah. like, you know, wouldn't be as fun. <laughs> no. So. No. You know, you don't, you don't want somebody to run away with it. You want people yeah. to be fighting for it. That was like, for me, that was the most fun show I've, I've been to all year because it was just so up in the air. Nobody knew what was going to happen. You know, it nope. could have gone to any one of those girls in that top four. And I don't Nobody think anybody, I don't think anybody would have bitched about it. Everybody would have been like, yeah, I, I can see it. Yeah, yep. I can see it. You know, like any one of the top four, even yeah. five, even fifth, even Emmy, if she was up there in that. Oh, 100. Like, I think I think any of them could have won that show that day. You know, so that tells you that they all look phenomenal, but they all have things to work on as well. Right. You know, and the same thing goes for NPC. We see this a lot with NPC competitors where they get off stage and they bitch about whatever it is because they didn't win that. Like we were just talking about the girl that, the, that you know, won her class, but not the overall and stuff like that. It's like you do realize that you are still an amateur. You're not even a pro yet. You have things to work on. Pros have things to work on. You have things to work on. Okay. Yeah. And it's okay. It's okay to have things to work on. That's what keeps us tethered to the sport. That's what keeps us doing it. And it's okay you know? to be disappointed. Like yeah. we would be lying if you and I, you know, walked in a show with expectations and our expectations were shattered. 100%. But a professional takes the time off. They'll get off stage. They'll go cry. They'll go let yes. it out in the bathroom. And Absolutely. then you come back as yep. a professional, whether you're an amateur or not. If you are going to fight for a pro card at any point, you always act like a professional. That's because right. when they hand you that pro card, you have earned that title, right? That's right. So it's okay to be disappointed in yourself and have yeah, you want to win for yourself. Of yeah. course, we all do. But 
going back out on social media or blaming the coach uh, if it's if it's not a pure blame on the coach. I mean, I guess there's situations where it could be, but yeah, um, yeah just like take a breath. It's okay. Yeah. Regroup and figure out where to go from there. Like use it as a learning moment. Yeah. And, you know, it's, again, it's okay to be disappointed. Just try not to be outspoken yeah. about it. And, and talking about the coach thing, I always look at that as being, you still hired that coach, right? So it's still on you. At the end of the day, it's still on you. You made that decision. I talk about it with being a business owner. At the end of the day, if one of my employees screws up, I still own the business. It's still my fault. Yeah. I was going to say, like, as a coach, like, I own up to my athlete if, yeah. I, if I screwed up the peak. Like, I'll be like, hey, listen, like, I didn't fill you out hard enough. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Like, let's go. Let's go do it again. Like, let's yeah. go do the next one. And, like, I feel like a good coach cares enough that they're going to be the one that comes up to you right away and says, I'm sorry. That was my bad. Yeah. You know, like, you're not going to have to blame them. They're yeah. already going to own it and take responsibility for it because i i respect that about jamie like there's been a couple times she's like i should have fed you more i'm sorry and i'm like mm -hmm. oh it's fine like we'll just do it the next time like but she she's already kicking herself because right. she knows the look that we were trying to bring like right. that's what i'm saying like a perfect a, a, a perfect a good coach is already going to own that and take responsibility for it and feel not guilty but just just feel it for you because we're a team you know i yeah. tell my girls that all the time like if you lose i lose if you win i win like we are a team here and I'm trying to give a hundred percent of my best to every single one of yeah. you, but I'm, I'm human. I'm going to fall. I'm going to falter, especially if it's the first time I'm peaking you. It's our first show together. Like there's going to be things that I miss, but as yeah. we continue to go forward together, which is why it's so important to hang tight with a coach, because mm -hmm. yeah. you're only going to keep getting better and better the more that you stick with each other. Right. Well, and like what you did with, with yesterday with your, your client there with her front pose and everything too, sending it to me and being like, cause you, I know you've, how long have you worked with her? How, how many years? Uh, It'll be, it'll be just a year and a half this, this okay. year. Okay. So, you know, you're sitting there racking your brain, trying to figure out how to make her better. She went in and won like all of her classes this past weekend, but still she got feedback on things to fix. So you're trying to find, find any kind of solution you can to fix what she needs to have fixed. You know, and you just sent me over photos and asked about posing, uh, posing help and all that kind of stuff. That's, that's what you do as a coach. Like we're trying to fix those things that are wrong. Whatever yeah. we can do, we're trying to fix those things that are wrong. Yeah. We're a week out from the show and I'm still trying to fix that front pose. Like I, like all the girls that got off stage are heading to universe in a couple yeah. of years, taking every single one of their feedback. And I'm like, how can I make them better? Yeah. And especially this, this client that we're talking about, like that front pose is very difficult right now. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's, and I am just racking my brain and her and I are going back and forth, but like, that's me. That's my coach. Like again, her and I are a team. Like she, again, Sean just said she swept her into the, the entire show, but still had feedback that the front post needed to be better and create more shape. So now I'm trying to do everything I can and I don't have all the answers. I'm utilizing all my resources. Sean of them being one of them. I called Jamie. I texted you. I said, you guys tell me, what do you guys think? Yeah. Coach, what do, we do with it. And that's the beauty of a body fusion. Cause a lot of coaches don't have that outlet, but like, that's where like, you know, she still had feedback and I have told her now a hundred different ways to change this front post and she just keeps taking it with grace. Like, <laughs> yep. Well, same thing know. with me. I mean, the whole reason why I changed my front post in the first place, like, is because, I, you know, we looked at it and there was just, you know, standing in front of Jamie over the last couple of years, like we knew it was okay, but we knew there was still stuff missing. There was just something not quite right about it. And that's why every time I go to a show that Jamie's there, that's why I get in front of her because I'm like, okay, let's figure out something, you know, let's try this, let's move there, let's do this, whatever finally found the right position but it's taken years yeah. it's taken years to get there and i'm a posing coach myself and i couldn't find it you know what right. i mean so yeah, well, we it's can't like, be ourselves like other yeah. people yeah yeah it's like we got it's not you're never done you know and still this pose is still not done but it's better i was gonna say give you like three years it'll probably be different <laughs> it'll be different <laughs> well, you nail it <laughs> right as soon as i finally get it or the criteria will change or yeah. something you know what i mean so go back to the stallion pose right they'll say they don't they'll say they want us to pull our lats out now or whatever you know no. something something crazy like that so it's like it's never done and it's like that's that's the thing that that boggles my mind too sometimes because sometimes i have clients that they have so much potential. Like I can see it in them. They have so much potential, but maybe they pose people themselves or whatever. So they don't want to come to me for advice because they don't, it's, it's like it shows their weakness or something. I'm like, no, just, just come. I'll help. Like I'll help. Come help, help me help you. Help me help you. Like I, there's so much there that you're not utilizing. And I'm literally standing here in front of your face and you can utilize me. Like that's what I'm here for. 
Yeah. You know? And you can give <sighs> one of the smallest critiques or the smallest feedback or you saying things, something a completely different way that their posing coach or coach says it and it clicks for them and it changes the pose. Like right. it makes all the difference. You know, mm-hmm. that's something I want to be better at is getting in front of everybody and posing. Like, yeah, you know, get in front of you. I want to get in front of you. Yeah. Like, I want to get in front of all these people. And just say, hey, sh- tell me what you see. It doesn't mean that you have to take everything that people say. Everybody's eye is different, but it's great to get in front of people. It gives you staged or, you know, stage time and practice in front of people but again that growth mindset you know like Mm -hmm. you are never done like get Mm -hmm. feedback always be the dumbest person in the room always look for more tools and like all of us have such different experience you know utilize the people around you go to posing clinics i have girls that are like well i don't want to go to a posing clinic i've been posing forever go to the posing clinic like there's some there's five different pros there they could give you five different things to to do you come back to me we figure out the one that we like like Something it's, clicks, something you know, just clicks. something, you know, it's, it's, again, DC, I'm sitting there. I was, I was laughing. I was seeing the photos come up from, uh, that Greg was taking. And I'm like, all of us are sitting in the room watching Jamie check in her, her athletes. All of us are sitting there like, cause we're all sitting there trying to learn too. There's one person posing and there's 15 people in the room. I know. I feel bad for these poor athletes. Sometimes we're like, change that. And the athletes like, uh, like, I know. like there's the athletes that are like, this is really overwhelming. There's the athletes like, Oh my God. Like I'm standing in front of like six fit body coaches right now. Like how cool is this? And I'm like, yeah. Wow, like that is pretty cool. Like, like what for an me, experience. for me, yeah. it's not intimidating because I can't see anything because those damn lights. Greg had him extra sh- um, light this week. Like he, he I w- we were setting up the room before all the athletes came, and he's like, "Can you stand there so I could get a light check?" So he turns it on. And I'm like, "Holy!" Can't like see. I couldn't see anything. Nothing. Anything. He had it extra bright this weekend. Yeah. Which, by the way, when I was checking you with Jamie that night, I think you were there. I went completely off to the side, off the box, and I was walking yeah. to the back, and I was like, "They were trying to tell me my 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 feet were." I was like, "No, they're not." Like I didn't understand. So I figured it out later when I watched the video back what happened because when I was turning to the back, the one light went off on the left hand side. Yes. So it completely threw off my awareness, my spatial awareness as far as where I actually was on the floor. So I didn't I, like the box was right here and I should have walked back from the box. But what I saw was the apex of the room. So I went up towards the, the top of the room versus going back to the box. So when when Drew was telling me my feet were off, I was like, no, they're not. I was like, I'm looking right at them. They're fine. Well, like, that, that carpet was a little strange, too, because it's it like small yeah. checkered carpet. So you can't yeah. really gauge like where you're standing. I was so confused. I was like, I'm I'm like, I'm standing. I'm like, I'm looking right at the back wall. I'm like, I don't know. But you were See? off from the box. I was. I was off from the box. Yeah. So when I watched the video back, I was like, oh, oh, that's what I did. I went the wrong direction. I was like, I don't know how to turn. I, I can only turn left like Zoolander. I can only turn left. Oh, my God. <laughs> this was so, we had such a tangent today. This was not even close to the. To the... <laughs> it's all right. Hopefully you guys like the, uh, all the information. Interrupting our scheduled programming for just a moment here to introduce our brand new YouTube channel partners, Liquid Sunrays. If you know anything about me, you know that I've used Liquid Sunrays, nothing but Liquid Sunrays, my entire competitive career for 15 years. And we are so excited to welcome them as an official partner of our YouTube channel now. So if you've never checked them out, scan the QR code right here, or I will also put a link for their site down into the description box below. Get over there, check out their products and services, book them for your show, get their DIY stuff, get their competition skin prep. You'll want to use a skin prep even when you're not in competition prep. It's that fantastic. And let them know that I sent you. You can use code cuties15. And again, thank you so much for your belief in us and in our products and in our services. We believe in you just as much. So thank you so much for your support, Liquid Sunrays. And again, scan this QR code right here. Go check them out. Let Mama Rays know that Mama Cutie sent you. I was like, why are we talking? I'm like, we're not talking about mental any anymore. We're not talking about this stuff anymore. It's a little bit of everything. I'm like, I'm gonna have to go through this at the end and be like, okay, where where am I put the timestamps? <laughs> where did our topic just, start? Just, just write us the the uh, subject. Like, good luck figuring out what we're talking right? about today. I know. We're just, just we're brain dumping. We're brain dumping. I know. Just just podcast. just hold on and enjoy the ride. Hold on, and enjoy I think the that, ride. The listeners love that. They just love you know anything that we have to say. So. 
Yeah. Right, guys? They love us. Hopefully. They love us. They totally love us. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, I think this happened, too, because, again, we were both at the same show together. So we have a lot of the shared, same shared experience from being at the show. So we can talk about all the things that happened. All the things. Yeah. All the things. So, you know, plus we're both on prep, so we're probably not all there right now either. You know? Oh, no. No. <laughs> I am not all there right now. <laughs> I don't. And I'm not even that deep. Like, I'm, I'm, you know, 13 weeks out at this point. So how many weeks do you – well, you haven't picked a show, so – yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't know. You're like, I'm not even going to say. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm somewhere. <laughs> I'm, I will say I'm about 10 pounds off, so. Yeah, we, well, I'm about 11 pounds Some time, off. but not, not that much time. Yeah. yeah, according to last year, I'm 11 pounds off, but I think for according to this year, it's probably going to be about nine. So I think I'm see like, I'm that's what I was talking to Jamie about. I said, I think I have about 10 to 12 more pounds to go because <laughs> to cut down at 118 and fill yeah. back out to 120. Yeah. And she said, she said yesterday, I think we're going to get to about 120 and you're going to be there. So okay. we're at one, we're at 133 as of this morning. Okay. So maybe about 10 to 13 pounds. We'll see. Yeah. So we're yeah. both kind of in that same zone, you know? Yeah. So <clears throat> I've been kind of, I guess it took a while for me to start dropping weight, but now I'm starting to get like eh, about a poundish each week now. So it's that's averaging. Good. So that's good. I'm like, you know, that that's good. I'm not going too fast. I'm not going too slow. I'm like, I'm right. I'm zoning, I'm zoning in. Hopefully, yeah. like, hopefully my food doesn't get cut again because I'm fucking starving. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, now, that you, now that you figured out the bagel. I know. Now that I figured out the bagel. Yes, the bagel made a huge difference. Um, for those of you that don't know, I was I was logging uh, half a bagel when I was actually eating One a full bagel. bagel. So, yeah. Yeah, I just... Watch those settings, guys. Because what I did was, I the one night that I was at my parents, I had an extra half a bagel that night after I finished my workout. So it saved into my, my fitness pal as a half a bagel instead of a whole one. So for two weeks, I logged it as a half a bagel when it was actually, I was actually eating a whole bagel every morning. So shame on you. How dare you? I know. It's like, and as soon as it I happens. stopped that, I know as soon as I stopped, I dropped two pounds the next week, two and a half pounds. So okay. <laughs> plus I got all the crap out of my colon, literally got all the crap out of my colon. So there was that. So good point. Know. Good point. That, that helped too. I mean, that I, guys, I'm telling you, this Gatorade Zero, a couple of these a day, this plus the dates, I've not had a problem at all. So I'm hoping I used to drink that all the time, the berry flavor. Yeah, I just have a big variety pack. I'm actually not a huge fan of anything blue. I'll drink it, but I'm, I don't like blue food coloring. I don't know what it is. It's just like it kind of turns me off a little. Mm. I'm more of an I'm more of an orange person. I like orange. I like orange. Orange, pink. Yeah, red I can sometimes do, but sometimes I'm, I have a little bit of an allergy to it as well. So that can actually – red food dye is not the greatest. I know a lot of people actually are allergic to red food dye. I have a My, little uh, bit of intolerance husband's to brother it. is yeah, the red like, food dye. Yeah, I have to be careful. If I stick it in water flavorings and stuff like that, it's not good. Um, yeah. I either It's one of two things. Either I get constipated or I go too much. It's one of the, one or the other. So I have to be careful of, with the red. So, a lot of sodium in those too. So I found yes. like, I, like, my fingers swell and I bloat. Oh, really? From these? Yeah. Oh, not me. Only if I do the, I usually do the big one. Oh, okay. Okay. I did that. Yeah. I did that in a prep to like two years ago. And then I okay. just cut it out. Yeah. This one's what, I think this is 10 ounces, I think 12. So I have like two of these a day and that's it. It's fine. And yeah. For me, I, I haven't felt like this is the, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Cause I'm not like, it's, it's flushes me. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's the most, it's the most balanced I've been. And I think, I, cause I don't, I don't really add a whole lot of sodium to my food. So I think this just helps with the balance. Yeah, for sure. So everybody's going to be a little different. For sure. But, but anyway. All right, I got to pee. Good place to stop. <laughs> <laughs> with all, all the coffees and all the waters and all the Gatorades and all the energy drinks and all the all the fluids in the prep. All the things. All the things. All the things. <laughs> I think that's going to be our, our topic title right there, all the things, because that's really what we that do. That is today. a good one. I actually like that. <laughs> I think we're going to change it. It's all the things. That's going to be that's gonna be our topic title I like it. <laughs> okay, so I like it. that's episode 42, uh, when we thought it was 43, but it's 43. Sorry about we're just, that. We're just full of it today, guys. We're just full of we're it. We're prep brain. <laughs> we can't even really. I'm like, we're not even in single digits with our prep yet, so we can't really even blame it. So anyway. That's true. I am down, and 10, I was thinking, I'm down well, 10 pounds though, 11 last, pounds. Though. Yeah. Last thing you're going to be at universe, right? Yes. So see, I'm going to see you at universe too. We were talking about, we were talking about seeing each other in Tampa, but we're going to see each other in universe. In I, you probably won't see a lot of me in universe though. I have nine athletes and between yeah. all of us at Fit Body, we have 50 yeah. plus yeah. athletes. So it's going to be a wild weekend. I have five, but yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. 
I mean, my, mine are, none of them are prep clients though. They're all hair, makeup, posing suits, that kind of thing. So still, still five clients. It's still five. It's still five. Yep. But as soon as pre judging starts, my job's done. Cause they're all getting, on well, stage. you could come my help me done. with mine. If you want, I, I, have nine. I would be more than happy. Hit, hit right. me up. I can, I can bring you your creamer. I can bring yeah. you your creamer. Keep, keep the coffee coming with the creamer. Yep. And I'll be driving. So I'll have my car. So if you guys need anything, I got you guys covered. Perfect. Thank We've you. got this. We got this. We got all right. this. So we with that, it. you guys, we are going to wrap it up. This is sorry it was all over the place today, but I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, like, comment, subscribe, wherever those buttons happen to be. Episode 42, all the things. <laughs> We're done. We're out. Bye.